What's up, my friend? How you doing, Terrell? Good. Enjoying Austin. It's so cool now here. It was last time I visited. It was so 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 hot and stormy. Yeah, we get seasons. Actually, yeah, kind of. I love it. Yeah. L.A. You don't. Yeah, it's not like being in Aspen, you know, where you really no, get not. seasons. But you know, we get some. Yeah, I grew up in Finland, so I had all of the seasons. But now it's kinda, L.A. There's most basically it's just like cold and dark as shit, and yeah, then sunny is. and bright as shit, and everybody's <laughs> happy as fuck. Yeah, touche. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Yeah, twenty four hours of sunlight or no sunlight. That was the craziest thing when I was in Gothenburg. It's just, I guess, probably similar to yeah. Finland's where a little bit further up north, but similar. Yeah, a little bit further. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'd go to the bar. It'd be light at like eleven, and then we'd get out at three. And darkness, we just miss it entirely. Yeah, just the, gone. The, yeah, and the winter is the opposite. Yeah. You see the sun creeping up a little bit, yeah. and then it goes down again. They have know? weird things with alcohol there. Do they have weird things with alcohol in Finland? Like yeah, dude, it's like that's actually relevant to all the mushroom stuff as well. Is is depression is pretty? It's a real thing when you have that seasonal depression because of the darkness. You get no yeah. vitamin D. So a lot of the indigenous people use mushrooms to get vitamin D, but also... And is that D2 or D3? That's well, that would be mushrooms? D2. Yeah. Um, so, but it's still like if you have no vitamin D, even if the absorption is not ideal, it's still one of the sources how you get vitamin D during the winter. And then obviously... And also different types of mushrooms are oh, very yeah. good at c- You're wearing an depression. A- Amanita <laughs> muscaria yeah. pin that was used in our one of our biggest holidays. So we have two big holidays. One Called is Christmas? Mid- Christmas. <laughs> Or it was one day kind of different with the Gregorian and uh, calendar and, and the Julian calendar. So there was like one day difference almost to the current. But yes, so that was like one when in, there was no um, light at all. And then summer is midsummer is the other time when we do magic. Mm. And uh, the two times when we do magic is, you know, when it's the, the days the longest and days the shortest. That makes, that's, sense. makes sense. No. So are you w- pretty well versed on this Amanita Christmas Santa Claus I'm you know, solid. I'm definitely. Genesis. All right. Why don't, why don't you just drop that on us for anybody who hasn't heard it? It's one of Joe Rogan's favorite things to talk about. Yeah. So you might have heard it already, but let's hear it from the mushroom man himself. So uh, let's start with the ending is that Santa salt shrooms. So <laughs> basically, so how we think of Christmas is mostly brought to the U.S. by the Dutch. Dutch stole it from the Germans, you know, St. Nicholas. The Germans took it from the Russians. Russians took it from this indigenous group of people called Sami, S-A-M-I. That in the northern Norway, Sweden, Finland, and kind of the northwestern part of Russia, they live. And that's, by the way, the area where reindeers are domesticated. Reindeers don't live in North Pole. Okay. So mm-hmm. this is Arctic Circle, super high up north. And they would have this indigenous group of people. And, the, and these original Santa Claus was shamans. Basically, that would heal common ailments. You know, you had a issue with your leg or you had a flu. Just like they, the plant doctors all over the world. All over the place. So probably 99. Burgeros, vegetalistas, yeah. Siberian hut shamans. Yeah, exactly. Same thing, different indigenous and plants. And that's why they say Santa Claus lived forever because there were so many of them. Yeah. And they would be generation after generation. And, and and the whole color red came later. They would not wear red. They wear blue. There's a little bit of red in their outfits, but mostly blue. And they would travel. Oh, I'm fucking rocking a blue Santa Claus. <laughs> I'm going with the throwback jersey this, wanna... this Christmas. Anybody want to get authentic as fuck, go throwback blue Santa Claus and be like, bitch, know your history. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and uh, they would go from village to village with reindeers. That was one of the f- big domesticated animals. You know, there's you know, seven to nine large domesticated mammals. And, Did they have one with a brighter nose that yeah, would lead exactly. the way in the dark? Well, that gets to later in the story. <laughs> okay, shit. So the, the, so the shamans or, or the Santa Clauses would go around and pick wild herbs and mushrooms. And in September, October, they would go into the spruce tree, which is the Christmas tree. So if you go to, let's say, New York, and you see this big Christmas tree, and it's it's uh, it's a Norwegian spruce or something like that. And underneath that grows Amanita muscaria or Fly agaricus, which is the red mushroom on your iPhone. On also your shirt. in my little, yeah. little shirt so, pocket thing here. Absolutely. So it is the red mushrooms with the white dots. The whole Amanita muscaria family is kind of toxic. Some of them are even lethal, but this one is poisonous, but not lethal. You're not going to die from it. And it has special powers that we'll get into later. <laughs> anyway, so you pick it up under the Christmas tree. So that's why a lot of countries the gift the presents are put under the tree or then because you serve it in you know end of december you have to dry it so that's why it might be on a sock on top of a top of a oh fire. man everything makes sense even yeah. the fucking socks <laughs> the socks it goes so deep so i anyway, didn't think it went so deep yeah anyway so you dry it and uh and the sami people so this spruce is one of the holy trees you know it's like avatar you know the navi people would have this holy tree it's one of the sure. holy trees and because it provides have, these gifts. Yeah, and, yeah, it's a special tree. 
And then um, the star on top of the Christmas tree is, um, is the polar, is the brightest star in the constellation. You would use it to navigate. It's a GPS, basically. And you, man, you were sandbagging us when I said, how good are you on this fucking <laughs> Christmas story? Because <laughs> you're really good. Like, you yeah. got this one down. Well, now we get to the stuff that a lot of people don't know. Like, for the, that what, so the red balls in your Christmas tree were the Amanita muscaria. So what the shaman would do is called the butterfly loop. So you would have uh, a tree, you have to dry it. And if you don't have fire, you would just put it, um, the, the mushrooms on the tree and let the sun dry. That's how the vitamin D is created. Mushrooms are similar to animals in the way that they cannot produce their own food. They need external food sources, but they can also um, create things through the skin, same way as we assimilate vitamin D from the sun. Mushrooms can assimilate vitamin D from the sun. Mm -hmm. So you sun dry it. So you take the biggest tree, the biggest spruce that has a lot of sunlight and you start putting Amanitas that you find in the Christmas tree branches. And you start making butterfly loops around it and you start bringing, you take a loop, come back to the main tree, take a loop, come back to the tree. So eventually there's a tree somewhere with 100 Amanitas hanging from the Christmas tree branches. So even if you go back to the German stories, you still see kids holding the Amanita. So that, a lot of these traditions either changed or mm -hmm. got left over along the way as it went through Europe and eventually the US. But if you go back to the German photos, you see little kids with Dominitas. Yeah. So anyway, um, this is this is Sam, Santa drying out the shamans drying out these mushrooms, and then this other main holiday of this winter equinox, you know, comes and and uh, there's a lot of snow. You're so mm -hmm. far north, and you would travel with the reindeers, and you would get to the village, and they would have this huge teepee, almost like a yurt meets teepee. It's called kota, K O T A, and it has a hole on the top because you need fire. It's freaking cold. So you need fire inside. And um, and if there's a lot of snow during the night, you can't enter. The kota has like a really uh, low entrance to kind of crawl in. Are you about to tell me they come through the chimney? They come through the <laughs> chimney. <laughs> so, um, and then you would uh, do a ceremony. We don't really know. They have this drum that has afterlife. They make a little round drum and it's you draw in, in like the underworld, which is death, which is obviously a common thing with psychedelics. It's like mm -hmm. handle, how to handle death and how to come with the grips of dying and getting sure. comfortable with that. One of the master fears we all yeah. have to grapple with. And uh, I think that's one of the themes around psychedelics generally, just around death and life and death and that seemingly binary you know, thing, but mm -hmm. it's necessarily not. So then, um, and they would have this ceremony and they would have, and they would probably see reindeers flying and uh santa <laughs> well, so we got to get into that so and did they also deliver i heard that they delivered sometimes the hot shamans would deliver gifts to the to kids as well yeah so yeah so this was originally so the psychedelic mushroom of amanita muscaria is technically the first christmas present mm. so santa salt shrooms is not fully correct because it was a gift yeah so but that was the original christmas gift yeah and then um and they would obviously have other gifts as well you know it's like a celebration it was a it was a holy time but the fascinating part is obviously the fact of Amanita being slightly poisonous. And now we're going to enter a pretty crazy part about some of these shamanistic traditions that like not often are discussed in today's world of ayahuasca being popular and whatnot is urinotherapy. Are you familiar with yeah, that? Have you heard? I am. I am. So unfortunately, Amanita is, is poisonous, not lethal, but it's going to make you sick. So depending on the tribe, the strongest male or the weakest woman would be sacrificed and they would eat it and get fever and get sick. And what? Wait, wait, wait. Why would it be the strongest male or the weakest woman? Well, a strongest male could take it the best. Yeah. Because it's the strong, so you can handle being sick. A weakest woman was the most... Dispensable? Well, dispensable. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, so, but th then we get sick. Everybody else would drink the pee. So actually, the amanita muscaria, the psychedelic compounds get um, stronger. It's almost like an extraction, like you do yeah. with some herbs. There's distilled. A hot, a distilled, but it also removes the toxicity of it. So everybody drinking the urine would not get sick and they would get extremely high. Because the kidney filters out the toxicity. Yeah. Now, as far as the mechanism of action, amanita is not a classic psychedelic. It's no. a GABA agonist, if mm -hmm. I have that correct, which is similar to what alcohol does, but it, you know, or GHB if you're into yep. other recreational drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but it has a, you know, a slightly different flavor because there is a psychedelic component. Now, I haven't experienced it just because I haven't found the it's right rough. pea it, vessel it's, and it's, figured it, out how to dry it right. And it's a process. I would do it like if you were like, hey, man, yeah. come over to my crib. You can drink my pea. I'd be like, all right, I'm in. But it's, and that's, just that's, not that's a sign of like how healthy I think you are. Yeah, also. I may you. be totally wrong. Yeah. You may be just fucking eating packaged macaroni and cheese. I've never yeah. eaten with you. But uh, 
but yeah, I, I, I would do that. But I haven't gone through the process. However, some of my buddies have, and I've gotten texts from them. And it was like, it wasn't like psychedelics generally, people are very lucid. And what yep. they say, I just take a seat and listen and I'll take notes because yep. they're, they're tapped into something. These guys were talking about like battle toads and like they were just not on the most it, like no, it's, spiritually it's, it's, it's grounded. A dark, it's a dark one. Yeah. Like obviously everybody will have their own experience and, and, uh, but it might, it's, it's not the one that you start out with. Right. It's not, it's not the one on one. So you've experienced this. Yes. Yeah. So, so walk me through like what, how would you describe it? Like how would you compare an Amanita experience to anything else? Well, first of all, you can have it on a microdose. So it's not, it's not impossible. So you can have it if it's dried really well, you're not going to get toxicity. I'm not as big into like microdosing and that kind of stuff, but I have a few friends who actively microdose on Amanitas and it does make like flavor stronger. And so it's like, like you said, it's a darker flavor. On the experience, how I would say is, is um, obviously everybody will have their own experience with psilocybin. So like yep. you never know whatever you're processing, but I would say psilocybin is, is a happier connecting with the universe. You know, being one is a theme of mm -hmm. like being connected. Yeah, unity to all things, the yeah. plants, the earth, the animals. So let me just give this, I don't think it's a surprise that these Sami people talk about underworld and death and demons. Right. So I think that's probably kind of a clue that what you might see. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting thing because you think about like the life cycle of, um, in, in general, like for alcohol, for example, like yep. alcohol is created in the death cycle. Yep. And so it can tend to create some more, some darker impulses. Yep. When I say dark, I mean just on that other side rather than these kind of light, life affirming. Yep. It's more in the, you know, violence and yep. more aggression and some of that other the dark side that alcohol yep. can tend to bring out. And I, I so could that's imagine, how I would describe Amanita's. Yeah. Well, and then, so and on the GABA side of this as well, and even, you know, GHB, same thing, anything yep. that acts on that mechanism seems to steer people that direction. Whereas but the serotonin it, mechanism seems yep. to steer people towards that kind of hard opening. Yeah. Lighter. Mechanism. And you need, you need both, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, I it, probably wouldn't start there and I would be extra careful where you do. Cause it can what, be more scary, especially if you're not experienced in, navigating those worlds where the demons come like if you're still if you still have any fear associated with that then yeah. the fear will trigger this kind of spiral but this mushroom is not illegal so yeah yeah so. you can order this mushroom i think i ordered mine on i don't know somewhat like i am mm -hmm. or something like that little shot yeah. or bouncing bear botanicals those are two <laughs> places they used to shop at um but i think one of them is out of business now uh but anyways yeah it, it's it's interesting that it, it would be a you know that different experience that kind of correlates with just a different life cycle, different neurotransmitter. Yep. Um, but certainly something that I'd be interested in experimenting with because, you know, I've, I have plenty of my share of seeing the dark side. And yep. there's a beauty in that as well, especially if it doesn't trigger the fear. Yeah. Like if you see it and you get terrified, then you're going to have a horrible trip. And you but also if, have to understand that this was usually taken at the darkest time of the year. It's, it's almost 24 hours of darkness, but you see the stars and you're connected and there's yeah. like snow. It's like, a, it's, it is like the underworld of yeah. death of the year. And then January starts the new year, slowly the birth. And then midsummer is like the peak and just that circle of life. Man, those pagan rituals were dope. Yeah. I mean, it's just a shame that our, our rituals are so empty and vapid. Like we took this very meaningful thing with a potent psychedelic mushroom and a huge tradition around it, celebrating seasonality, time of year, themes, dealing with your death, the underworld. And we just fucking hallmarked it. And now it's just nonsense. It's a completely meaningless holiday. And then not only hallmarked it, but then like religiousized it. Yeah. You know, what, how do you say that? Religiousized it? Yeah, I don't Religious. know. I'm, I'm, English is not my first or second language. <laughs> so I have no But clue. whatever, like we just, they just no, kind of like co-opted co co it. Maybe you've looked into it, but I, it was like a, it seems like, you know, San Pedro, pay, like you mm -hmm. have experience with that. So it's like, they gave you like, okay, we're not gonna ban you from this substance. You love this substance so much, but want you to adapt Christianity or whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can have it, let's just change the name and do this and that. And, and then eventually the the sacrament gets yeah. weaned out of it. And, and then it just becomes into, yeah, empty. Totally. Same with every single holiday from fucking Halloween to you know Easter to all of the different, all of the different holidays that correl correlated with something ultimately that began as meaningful but we even do that with our own ceremonies like wedding ceremonies yeah. you know there's like wedding there's like wedding factories here in texas where like what you just that? show up and everything is just 
choreograph cue down to the thing. It's like a standard script. Here's where the people sit. Here's the buffet menu items. Yeah. Here's how. Here's the jokes that we're gonna make. Here's the time that you cut the cake. Here's where you have your fake cake fight. Here's where you have the photo of the fake cake fight. Here's where you have the daddy daughter dance. Here's the five most popular songs. Blah blah blah. You could literally go through there, Scripted. multiple choice it, and fucking you're out of there in thirty minutes. Peace, bitches. I'm married. You know. And it's like, I've been to those. Have I'm, you? I've been to those. You know, and I just look at them. I just get so disappointed. I'm like, it's, where's uh, the fucking meat of this even, thing? Uh, even the first time I came to the U.S., I would tour all the, like, the national parks. Just fascinating. The drive-through national park. You go to oh, yeah. Yellowstone. Everything. You're not leaving the car. You're just driving through a bison. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're just driving through. It's, it's, uh, it's a funny yeah. experience. People like these kind of like really shorter, shorter loop stuff. But the real value comes from when you vary from the path when you carve out the time to drink someone's urine and visit the yeah, underworld not, not everything is bullet sizable the other yeah. phrase i like is um go, going to the church or wherever makes you as much as a christian as going to the garage makes you a mechanic right. so just the act of going somewhere and being in a place doesn't make you that like you have to sure. live it and be it yeah there's a, a joke amongst some like true christians who follow like the christian mystic tradition yeah. they'll have the common saying the hardest place to find a christian is in the church wow you know That's just great, because yeah. the religiosity and the judgment and some of the things that develop around a structure yeah. like that well, lose the true idea of you know yeshua's teachings which is god is within us all we are all the same we're all you know and uh, what was fundamental it? principles uh saying assassin or how do i pronounce that correctly scc scc yeah, yeah. Uh, and finish it something totally different. <laughs> I'm not surprised. But uh, he, they said that when he learned more about faith and his own faith, he got quiet. The older yeah. he got and the older he learned, the less he talked about it. It was, yeah. it was his personal journey within, and it was not a journey to, to the... To and that's, that's it. It's, again, it's just talking about the direct experience versus the, the learned experience. You know, something yeah. that someone else has told you or something that lo loses the meaning. Like, for any kind of deep spiritual process you need to feel it like someone can tell you about it and it's okay that's cool you yeah. know but then when you feel it and experience it yourself it goes from this idea to a knowing and then once it's a knowing then it can start to actually guide your life yeah you know but you have to feel and touch it and i think that's what's missing from all of our holidays all of our rituals all of our ceremonies and that's i think why some of these things are really coming back like you said ayahuasca and i wouldn't be surprised if there starts to be some more of these other kind of pagan rituals so do you think that now that that gets more popular someone makes it a process same way as what well, kind of already the, is the, the wedding pro the udv the yeah. i mean not i don't I haven't sat with them and i know a lot of people get a lot of value out of that yeah. it's still ayahuasca serve but it is a very ritualized process where yeah. you drink the tea in a very specific amount a very specific brew you stand up at this certain point sit down at this certain point stand up but the ayahuasca is so strong that despite the <laughs> despite the like real process of it, Some, it's still ayahuasca, right? Like they haven't taken it and made it diluted, you know, dirt tea. Yeah. Some my my friend is uh is a professional snowboarder and, and he also likes to skate and surf. And he often talked about snowboarding as what makes snowboarding special is unlike surfing, you go and you wait for the wave. Sometimes you don't catch it, sometimes you do. But if you catch the great wave, it's the most amazing thing. Mm -hmm. Snowboarding, you're guaranteed to get an experience. Yeah. So that's how I think of like surfing, like meditation, and then psychedelic is like snowboarding. You're guaranteed to have some, you're coming yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, Either yeah, you're yeah, rolling yeah. down the hill, yeah. you know, uh, you might have your leg broken, but you're coming down. <laughs> yeah. You're not staying up there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, meditation, you might sit there and nothing happens. So. That's true. Yeah, I've I've been gravitating more towards like the embodied meditative practices, yep. so like ecstatic dance or yoga or. Um, but do you know, think it's easier to do that now that you've had these other experiences and you have sure. framework? Sure. Sure, yeah. but it's also I've also led those practices like breath work, ecstatic yep. dance, and people reliably get to really interesting places. Like the mechanism of using your body and music to create trance, like body plus music plus yep. dance to create trance to create altered states of cognition and brainwave patterns like that's proven that's that's been around that. for, forever so people can you can actually use that to help guide your meditation but certainly getting in altered psychedelic states have then informed everything else as far as like what are the goals where am i trying to go you know when i'm doing any of these practices i'm just trying to now get I'm out gonna, of my head i'm gonna say the most woo woo thing of, of, of today but uh, i don't care I'll uh, try and top you. Let's see. We'll so, have a challenge. Um, my friend um, 
has had now four babies or uh -huh. and uh, every time after getting the baby when or his partners had a child together with them um he goes out walking the forest and he sees trolls and says like you know a week after having a baby the dmt is so high naturally in his body that he sees these creatures in the forest whoa and like a week after he doesn't see them and first time he was like what's going on you know then it happened again second baby and, like, and he's not even carrying the baby obviously so no yeah not at so, that age no huh so but it's fascinating of like like even that ecstatic dance and all that stuff mm -hmm. like such a compound like dmt is how can we generate more of it on a daily basis but right yeah it, it's there's so knows? many you know there's so many endogenous that's one of the things about dmt is it is an endogenous yep. compound and so you know hypothesis and dream state and w dying state and all these states where you get these massive dmt releases potentially explaining some of the alien abduction stuff though there might be fucking aliens hey, like who knows? That, i don't know who knows you know we'll see about that i want to talk to you a little bit um and shift courses about uh because you're also an entrepreneur started yeah. a dope company with products that Thanks, i man. use and a bunch of people use i'm drinking them right now uh, a combination of your reishi and your chaga and your cordyceps mushrooms Look at triple shot. yeah <laughs> and i mix them it's one of those uh yeah uh those days when you need yeah, a triple totally. shot yeah and i mix some exogenous ketones and some of our mct oil in here yep and it's fucking good that your mct is great with those it's, yeah it yeah. is it's so easy to travel with as well and yeah um so you know you obviously had an affinity and an understanding of the medicinal power of mushrooms something that probably you were familiar with and then yep. also you know a general understanding of business and then you went about forming this brand you know, take us a little bit through that that process because you know this is the classic kind of entrepreneur's roadmap where find an interesting thing that you know know about and then apply all your business skills and make a brand and build this up. Yeah, so I think there's two folds to that. Is is one to think of it is you need skills like I'm a 13 generation family farmer. My mom would who taught physiology and anatomy would take me and my brother foraging, and I went to an you know, uh, environmental school where we forage for things that my great, great granddad started. So there's all this lineage of knowledge. So you need that knowledge to create, truly create products, understand what's, you know, hype and what's not. At the same time, you can, in today's world, you can learn that. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to have lineage to be in topic area expertise. If you just talk to the right people, you know, and, and read the right things. It's helpful though. It is helpful. It gives you an advantage. The second thing is like, you have to love something to go through the tough times. Before we start, I told you a story about my friend who used to buy your products in way back and when, and mm -hmm. you were personally emailing them. It's like, hey, the shipment <laughs> yeah. is coming, I'm getting yeah. it out. You know, and there's a lot of those early days, tough times, especially if you don't like, you know, start with tons of like venture funding or whatever. Yeah. And just put a lot of heart to it. You need that to get through the tough times and hopefully create something that will outlast you, you know? And did you start with venture funding? Or? No, no, no. I, was, yeah. I, I We didn't, like I would have not even known how to got get any venture funding right. but i think if i would have gone is like hey do you want to invest in us drinking mushrooms yeah i mean with some exceptions i don't think a lot of people would have gotten not that then. Not yeah then. Not then. now might be a different story hey, that's There's probably so that some venture-backed mushroom companies yeah. yeah yeah consciousness is growing for sure mm -hmm. and um so so those are the two things is like i had this lineage but i also had the passion to go through the tough times and and i wanted to create a product that i enjoyed and i would buying like mushroom extracts from these random websites that you, who knew what was in them and opening capsules into my smoothies. And mm. I was like, you need to make this easier. And even if I found a great product, either from the wild or from another company is like, I try to give it to my friends and I've been coaching like pro athletes and models and whatever. They were like, that's so shady. Will I get high? Well, you know, what's yeah, that like? Sure. Can I like, what about drug test? If I'm an athlete, you know, you're familiar with that is like, they're extra careful about, you yeah. know, the safety is like, what if they fail a drug test or something yeah. like that? So, for those reasons, I'm like, hey, you got to make this more legit. So it's not like I am the greatest mushroom expert who's ever lived. That's not the point. We're both just yeah. standing in the soldier. Nobody's giant. Paul Stamets. Yeah, <laughs> and even he's not. He's not the 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 guy of yeah. all time. You know, there's people that have dedicated their whole yeah. life on just single mushroom, and they're whoa, more, you that's know. deep. Yeah, your and, whole uh, life on a single mushroom. Oh, oh, yeah, and specialized and, mycologist. Yeah, exactly, and and. Uh, and those people are more knowledgeable, but it's not that knowledge alone will take you. You have to find ways how you make it more accessible. So if 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 the information about 
functional mushrooms or any health, truly healthy food, it's not enough to educate them. You have to make them taste good and easy to use and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And uh, so that was a lot of the journey. Like the first products we made taste horrible. You know, it's like uh, just figuring out how to like make these super, super, super bitter compounds into something more palatable. Mm -hmm. That was a challenge. Then also messaging, like how do we explain something that is like an adaptogen who by definition is non-specific. Yeah. So technically if somebody asks like, why should I use cordyceps? Well, it balances your body. Like, what is that mm -hmm. gonna mean? So then you have to go back to research and say, it's like, how does it balance body? What are the energies that it creates? That? Okay, it's definitely like a performance. So now you put it performance. But technically, if you have a very balanced body, you could have cordyceps at night. It's not, yeah. it's, it's, an, it's an adaptogen. But yeah, like it's not you, a stimulant. Yeah, but you have to kind of like put it in, a, in an occasion that people are familiar with. Like not everybody has. And that's why you call it like pick me up cordyceps. Or yeah, something like, that. like like unfortunately, most of uh, the world doesn't have on their calendars blocked out a mushroom tea time. You know, mm -hmm. it's not. But they have a coffee time. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a workout smoothie time. So rather easier to just incorporate into those moments and try to make it like more accessible and less scary. And yeah, I think that's what you're doing is. You know, I think a mistake a lot of people make is you can assume that the market is as passionate about your product as you. Yeah. You know, that they're just going to do all the research and they're going to get super excited and yeah. they're going to hypothesize about all the places. Like, no, probably not. You know, yeah. they have their own shit that they're excited about, their own shit that they're passionate about. Yeah. You got to make it easy. And I think that's something that both you and I have done successfully. And, 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 uh, and then there's always the challenge of like, how do you show the love you've had? Like they say that yeah. expert becomes an expert by reading everything that they can read and studying all that they can study. But they get paid to be an expert by simplifying it into a one small thing. So if you read all this stuff about MCT and you source and you looked at different options and what's the good quality, what's the bad quality, how do we work this? And, and then you say, here, yep. this is the jam. This is what you need. Yeah. But it doesn't come from like, or this is what I want to sell. Like I went through all these other stuff or totally. alpha brain. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't know how many formulations you went through, you know, dozens and dozens. Like who, who you know, uh, Hubertia, you know, like if you, I've had it too much and then I can't sleep because I'm like sure. dreaming. all jittery and yeah. anxious <laughs> like, and fucked so up. So what's the right dose and then. If you take too much Hubertia, yeah. you can even have like a nicotinic reaction, which was some of the early batches of Alpha Brain were so strong. Like people would react as if they kept a big wad of Copenhagen in their mouth and it yeah. was the first time they ever, you know, had chewing tobacco. Yeah. You know, you could have a similar reaction like, you took two alpha brain, no, <laughs> you know, like there goes the next two but hours. You know what's the craziest <clears throat> is the intuition though. Like mm -hmm. I think internally we know what works, but like you work on the recipe on yourself and your friends and you figure out this works. I feel there's something here. And then years later you get scientific review that this works. Like, but yeah. it was intuition. Like if we forget all this, cause science is not the truth. It's the search of truth. It's right. like the pursuit of truth. Or the and, validation of truth. Yeah, yeah, correct. And we're trying to get there, but it's not the ultimate truth. So sometimes like intuition and tuning within and listening to your body will have those answers. But sometimes it's kind of hard if you're in this. Yeah, science kind of is fight. a limited body of research that currently exists. It's not yeah. that if it's not in the science, it's bullshit. And I think people yeah. have that. It's If it's not in the science, could be bullshit. Yep. Or it could have just not been studied. Well, even the time I've worked yeah. with cordyceps and mushroom, it's been renamed three times. Mm -hmm. And every time they're like, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> and then like a few years later, like joking, yeah, like yeah. we don't know. So like, who knows? Yeah. At the end of the day, the Latin name, the official name gets, keeps changing, you know? Yeah. What is it now? Still sinensis. No. Um, uh, so as cordyceps sinensis, Ch sinensis means from China. And then it became a cordyceps sinensis. And that was like a different strain. Now they figured out that it's a totally different um, type of, of on the sinensis family, but they're now they're almost saying is that even that is not the actual one. There's hundreds of varieties of it. Uh, we use one militaris, which is not. And that has an ant, that has an ant yes. uh, symbiotic relationship. So, so yeah, so that's the fruiting body versus most of the sinensis products have mycelium yeah. um, products. But at the end of the day, even the strains, like I get Peruvian, um, cordyceps, not a lot of people know that there is in, but it grows in high altitudes all over. So, mm -hmm. so we're just discovering, so like, who knows, but you have to kind of apply to FDA. So you have to kind of say what it is based on the current knowledge. So we say cordyceps militaris. Mm -hmm. So, cause based on the current knowledge, that is what it is. But what yeah. we know is that it works. Yeah, no doubt. And the research is continually getting oh, better. There is, you know? it's, it's not one or two papers, like a thousand. Yeah.
Yeah, and that's that's always good. We just we're about to publish. Uh, we release, but we're about to publish in a peer-reviewed journal some of the results on our cordyceps-based yeah. formula, Shroom Tech Sport. So we're able to show improvements in high-intensity interval training, a variety of different. Performance and it's also the stack, that. like you know, it's uh, synergies. No doubt, no and, doubt. Uh, Other adaptogens in there. Yeah. You know, some different things that we put into vitamin B vitamins and things to all kind of harness this together. And that's another thing that you guys do that's cool is I really like the the blends that you've come up with where you're getting a variety of these mushrooms and then putting them in blends so it's even easier than opening up the individual packets it's like all right i want the seven yeah. mushroom blend or the five mushroom blends or the viking superfoods i use that one in my berry smoothies cause it's a little tart yeah i mean look I, at the end of the day i would just want to sell everybody like a two pound bag of uh mushroom extract but it, they're not going to use it because that uh, yeah. compliance is everything if it's not made easy and combined in these synergistic recipes most people don't know how to use them because like really one plus one is five if you combine the right stuff like vitamin c b vitamins all this kind of stuff adaptogens mm -hmm. now let me see um you know if this understanding correlates with your understanding i was working with in our shroom tech immune formula we have a variety of different mushrooms different mushroom yep. blend from um you know chaga to reishi to lion's mm -hmm. mane a lot of the ones that you produce and when I was talking to the head mycologist who was trying to explain this in layman's terms, he was saying that the immune benefits, partly that you receive, although chaga has some other, you mm -hmm. know, particular unique un immune benefits, is largely derived from some activity of the immune system in correspondence with the beta glucans mm -hmm. in the mushrooms, in which the body recognizes those as foreign entities and then mm -hmm. starts to prepare their innate immune system response, yep. and because it's actually not a pathogenic molecule it's these beta glucans have no you know no other harmful effect on the body you end up generating more immune cells that can be repurposed for other immune challenges so it's like kind of keeping your standing army more ready and able to so, uh, to address so that's any other future totally concerns. true so um, first on a high level and then to the specific of mushrooms that's a, like a, it's almost like a hormetic stressor yeah. same way as turmeric mm -hmm. it it causes or a workout Workout will temporarily make you weaker, you yeah. know? Um, but it doesn't cause any, unless you injure yourself or you have some crazy other stuff happen, you're not gonna hurt you and you can recover fairly quickly and then you hit a new level. So in this case, they are like a boot camp for the natural killer cells and cytokines and they activate them or, or more specifically modulate them, immunomodulation for the, for, the, for the own immune system. So, same way as almost all the best things, they don't heal anything directly. They just help give the body the tools to be stronger. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically everybody's gonna get, this is a little aggressive statement, but everybody's gonna get cancer every day. Yeah. But some of you will have basically immune system and can fight it and destroy it. And cancer here being like a foreign object in your body, a foreign you know, cell that doesn't intrude or pathogen or whatever. And uh, so just having that activity there is so important. And Tim, autoimmune is the opposite. If your body's confused, it's too active. And when it comes to mushrooms, the top mushrooms that you mentioned, like cordyceps, chaga, reishi, lion's mane, I call them like the ninja turtles. You know, yeah. they all are yeah. ninjas and turtles, means they're all mushrooms. You should have colored them in ninja turtle <laughs> colors, you know? Yeah, they almost they kinda, are. They kind of They all, are. yeah, there's purple need to, uh, we need to yeah. change that. We need to Raphael. So, Was that, no, that was Donatello, the purple one. The purple, yeah. yeah. So basically, um, they're all ninjas and turtles. They're all mushrooms that help with the immune system and gut health. They're amazing for the gut. The beta glucans get absorbed in the colon. And there's like in the last few years, there's an incredible amount of research on- Colon for- Colon, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, like I said, English is not the first or the second yeah. language. Um, and uh, that helps the gut biome. So there's tons of research now coming out with medicinal mushrooms and the use for the gut. Mm -hmm. And uh, But what they also do have this special weapon. And so like cordyceps is clearly this sport performance and lion's mane is brain function. And yeah. by the way, that could be used with uh, with magic mushrooms as well, combined to create a stack there and stuff Ooh. like that. But point being is that they're all similar in the way that they help with the immune system and gut health. And uh, that's yeah. their- that's And their you're protocol. talking about the secret weapon, you're talking about particular other compounds besides the beta glucans that might be fine in there. Like they've, you know, some strains of cordyceps have adenosine in them, yep. which can help with ATP production. Correct, some so strain, that would be know. an example that you cannot find that in other compounds or they would have exceptionally high amounts like chaga would have SOD, which is a type of a superoxase dismutase, which is a specific type of very strong antioxidant. And that can help with, let's say, you know, lower inflammation or other things like that. So. Yeah. And one of the, you know, one of the things I talk about in my book, you know, in the, in the lunch chapter, I kind of spread out the nutrition philosophy yep. out throughout the main eating portions of the day. Um, 
is about eating weird foods. Yeah. Because when you have a really varied diet, then you're getting all of these weird, you know, super nutrients that you wouldn't normally get. So forage mushrooms, these exotic mushrooms, you may not know what it is, but when you go deep in the products produce section, you can pretty much assure yourself that in most cases, and even in the even in the meat section, if you're eating organ meats or yep. different shellfish or you know, be aware that sea veggies. Yeah, sea veggies. There's gonna be little super nutrients that you probably don't even know about, but you could research if you did, if you yep. brought up the Google there. But just the idea of varying our diet, because Huge. the average person eats like almost the same fucking ten foods yep. like their whole life. It's and like, this is something we can agree on with almost everybody in nutrition and health is like we battle that should you eat plant based or meat or should you be high fat, low fat. There's all this debate on internet that people love to go back and forth. Um, but we agree that we should have diversity in diet. And, the, and there's and, studies showing get benefits to gut health, benefits yeah. to immune health, benefits and across the board. How much did indigenous people, when they nibbled and all this stuff, how many different species and DNA and aren't like this knowledge, this intelligence of different plants they absorb throughout the year compared to what we have now? It's kind of incredible. And I believe that some of these um, mushrooms, like functional mushrooms, like cordyceps, they remind you of the intelligence of, of all fungi, you know? Yeah. And there's again a little woo woo, but they have this knowledge and you have this small amount and that you tap into this intelligence that is sometimes yet kind of hard to define. We can talk about B vitamins and D vitamins and, you know, uh, Pete the but I believe they all have this everyday magic in them that you can yet describe in words, but they remind you of this intelligence of mm -hmm. this planet. Yeah, they're a funny, mushrooms are just a funny organism. Yeah, they are. It's just a very unique. You're half a mushroom. I'm a half a mushroom. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, because of all the fungus that we yeah. have in our body. Yeah, naturally. Yeah, and where we share half of our DNA with them. That's why fungal medicine is so, um, so bioavailable because we share so much of our DNA with them. Yeah, I think I've gone full mushroom. Oh, you're gone. <laughs> yeah. I've gone. I've gone 100 percent mushroom on occasion. Not that I recommend going 100 yeah. percent mushrooms. Good yeah, to, to keep a shred of humanity there yeah. to help navigate the system. But certainly, clearly you know, can be massive allies for us, whether you're talking about the psilocybin mushrooms in the right set and setting, or whether you're talking about these medicinal mushrooms, or if you're just talking about delicious fucking shiitake mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Cut Shiitakes up in, are amazing. And butter and, and sea salt, you yeah. know, grass-fed butter and sea salt. Like, yeah, for sure. You know, they're just kind of, I think they're finally getting their moment of recognition, it really seems like. You know, they've... hopefully. Well, you know, even talking to Whole Foods, because we're getting a lot of our line into Whole Foods, and they're looking at, you know, what the biggest categories are, and they're like, medicinal mushrooms, so hot <laughs> right now. <laughs> and we we're actually trying to, we we're actually trying to partner with you guys. Yeah, yeah. But they're, but you're like merchandised in a different section. We're in both the, sections, actually. Yeah. So there was, there was some like, some shit. We we're gonna make some MCT, you know, yeah. elixir shakes. Now, like, well, it it's merchandised in the wrong category. We gotta, we gotta cut through the bullshit. Yeah, too. let's just give it to the people. What yeah. the people want, you know. Yeah, the people want. People want. People want fucking MCT oil mushroom elixir. <laughs> and if they don't know it yet, they will. They will. We'll, we'll make sure they know. Yeah, it makes a difference. I think it's one of those products that I tried it, and you know, somebody just handed me a packet, and it was the mushroom coffee. Yeah. And I think it was maybe Ben Greenfield who gave me the first yeah. one. I don't know who it was. And, you know, you kind of vibe with it. And especially if you understand the mushroom story, then it's like it's something that you'd start to adapt into your into your daily regimen. It reminds you it's almost a homeopathic dosage. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, what else, brother? Anything else on your mind you want to share with the people of the world? No, I think, I guess the mission I'm on is just the mushroom mission, you know, mm -hmm. reminding people that, hey, mushrooms are not necessarily better than other food groups or that they're not a cure-all that, and not all mushrooms are good for you or not. Yeah, don't go picking up the stuff in your grass. Yeah, and even if you get the right mushroom, there's the right time and place for it. But what I'm saying is that they're quite overlooked and you should give them an opportunity. And if nothing else, you know, read about them. And, you know, they, they are linked with the environment. They're linked with how plants collect water, they're linked with the knowledge of, of, of this earth. And this is not a woo-woo thing. This is literally like if we go to particle physics and we start talking about energies and all that stuff, that's actually like grounded on science. And if you start looking at mushrooms, you're going to realize that a lot of biology, for example, is based on fungi and, and learning from that. So that's just the only thing I want to say is like, you know, give mushrooms a chance, basically. Give mushrooms <laughs> a chance and check out his book. Yeah, this looks book. cool. Yeah. Got a bunch of cool recipes in here, too. 
um, yeah. different like elixirs and foods. So go buy Shroom Tech Sport and make cordyceps on the beach. <laughs> For sure. Buy some Four Sigmatic. Have both. Have both available. Sometimes the pills <laughs> are helpful. You don't have to mix anything up. Sometimes yeah. you can take the mushroom straight. But we're both huge fans of this. Enoki mushroom fries. They look so good. So if you have mushrooms, by the way, if you buy, don't eat raw mushrooms. Buy, um, utilize heat and lipids. So fats, like you said, saute and butter. So that's how you unlock their health benefits and their power and the flavor gets better. So use plenty of fats and heat. If, if it's a soup or you saute them or you put them in the oven, but just make sure there's fats and heat applied to them. Yeah, that makes sense. I can't wait to try and convince Kyle Kingsbury to take a big dose of Amanita so I can drink his <laughs> piss on fucking Christmas. We're going deep. He's Come, the, uh, he's to the strongest. He's Come a... to Sami people at Plan. Let's okay. do a trip and we'll see the Nordic lights stay in an igloo. That sounds pretty good. Hit up the reindeer. Hit up the reindeer. Drink yeah. some piss. Yeah, huskies, all that stuff. I'm into it. Yeah. I'm into it. Well, thanks for stopping by, brother. Thanks for having me. It's been me great. On. Um, everybody, uh, check out his book. Four Sigmatic is the company. And where can people find you on the socials? Uh, I am Taro, T E R O. Boom. He is. You yeah, are. I am. You are yeah, Taro. That's it's, what true. I'm, yeah. it's true. Yeah, it's fair. Fair, <laughs> fair statement. <laughs> See you, everybody. Peace. <laughs>